So good morning everybody and welcome to the Peak District National Park. As you can see behind me, I'm in a beautiful woodland setting, but this just isn't any old woodland setting. This is a truly ancient woodland. It's a triple SI site, a site of special scientific interest. So it's got lots of protected trees and these trees are absolutely full and oozing with beautiful character. If you look behind me, you can see how twisted and, and contorted all the oak branches are. And those are the sort of things that make these beautiful images that we see in those lovely foggy and misty conditions. Now, if you remember on my last film, I talked about workshops. Now, since then, I've been scouting, looking for places to bring people on those workshops. Now, I'm not going to go on and on and on about that today. I'm sure you don't want to hear all about my workshops on this film. The reason I've brought you along here today is so that you can come along and see what it's like to scout a new location. I have never been here, so I have no idea what to expect. The only thing I do know is down in the valley towards the left hand side there, which I might go a little later on, there's a lovely river with some beautiful mossy boulders. And because we haven't got the atmosphere today to photograph the trees, once I've had a look at those from a composition point of view, I'm going to head down there and maybe photograph some of the river sections. We're right at the end of autumn, so the trees are just about holding on to those autumn leaves. So there might be a chance of some landscapes, but um, I'm looking forward to just having a walk around. So come along, let's see what we can find. So would you just look at this beautiful gritstone footpath, absolutely stunning, leading your eye into all those beautiful twisted oak trees. This is the sort of thing that I have in mind. If you can imagine this scene cloaked in mist, where you can focus on maybe the oak to the right here and the one to the left, the two that are just sort of going over to the left hand side there, focusing on those, but allowing the background oaks to gradually recede into the distant mist and the different layers of tones. That's the sort of image that I have in mind. And this path creates that lovely leading to that mysterious um, woodland beyond, which will just disappear within the mist. Absolutely filled with character, definitely one to come back to. So whilst I was walking along the path, having just spoken to you about the last little place down there, um, I was looking through the camera and I was doing some sweeping shots just to create the atmosphere for the film. And um, often is the case is that when you're looking through the lens, um, you see things that otherwise um, you wouldn't have noticed. And that's because of the two dimensional way that the screens or the viewfinder presents things to you when you look at them. I've just come across these little trees behind me set up the camera I'm actually going to take this because it's I've got to get it as a reference shot if nothing else I don't think I can make anything of it today but I've got to get it um, it's basically a cluster of um, one two three four five five twisted oaks and they look magnificent get the camera set up properly now get it all rigged up ready to go and I'll talk you through the composition so the camera that you're viewing through now is essentially the composition of the camera that's positioned next to this one and um, I've got it all lined up there's no filtration on it and it looks pretty good I have to say I still think it needs that atmosphere but I, I want to take a shot anyway it's just superb the way that it's it's all sitting together we've got in the foreground just two one of two boulders here rocks these pointed ones that just help to fill this little bit of negative space that if they weren't there it would just be an empty an empty area to my mind some of you might think that actually they're a bit of a distraction but to me they fill that bit of a hole that's in front of the trees it's difficult for me to appreciate the composition from down here because you lose um, the compression and the effect and I really can't see it at all um, so I'm going to struggle to explain it but essentially um, <clears throat> this tree here on the left hand side holds the left hand part of the frame and then you've got this one over here leaning in to make the right hand side of the frame right down at the bottom um, are the two small twisted oak 
and, um, and the one on the right, the, the much more mature Tristed Oak. So you've got four trees essentially making up the composition, um, plus like I say, these boulders that are just holding the foreground. So let's go through um, the aperture settings. Um, it's going to be very quickly this one because there's not a lot to it. It is really all just about seeing the scene and just getting the shot. Um, like I said, the atmosphere is what will really lift this one. But just to add a little extra dimension that you probably won't see on a foggy day, if you look in the middle between the two trees, there's a little footpath, a little wooden staircase going up just to one side. Um, certainly today in these conditions, that just gives that little bit of extra interest and makes the, the image just that bit more special. Um, some lovely autumn tones still dotted around um, with, the, with the leaves as they're slightly backlit as well, just helping to lift the shot today. So let's grab it, let's get it while we can. So I was really hoping today that I'll get to use my new camera again. Unfortunately, this scene really fits um, the, the composition well for this camera and the focal length range that I've got. It's currently a 28 to 45 mil zoom. It's a wide angle zoom for a medium format camera. It's round about the 24 to 35 mil on a full frame DSLR. Um, but like I say, it's perfect for this scene. Now that I've stood here, um, for a little while and, and taking this scene in. I think there's also a shot with a vertical composition with just the two trees on the right. I'm going to try that again in a minute. Um, but for now, this was a pretty easy scene to frame up. The four trees just make up the composition beautifully. Um, pop the, uh, the, the image on live view. I'm using F22. What I am finding, and it is the case generally with medium format cameras, is that you do have to stop down quite a bit more to get the equivalent depth of field as you would on a 35mm camera. Um, I would normally go for about the F11, F14 mark for a shot like this, but here I'm going for F22 in order to get the first tree in and the back tree in, just to allow then for a little bit of fall off beyond to create separation. Very, very easy shot. Um, like I said, mirror's locked up. Um, I've got a two second timer on. I don't need to um, lock the mirror up separately because we're on, on live view, that's already done. So just take the image, two second timer. Yeah, absolutely beautiful. It's exactly what I hoped it would be. Probably going to do a little bit of um, work in post-processing just to make it that bit better to give you the idea of what it could look like uh, on a better day. But given a bit of fog and a bit of atmosphere, a bit of light coming in from behind would absolutely transform this shot. And that um, the little staircase in the middle there, well, that's, that's just an expected bonus. So I'm going to turn the camera on the opposite orientation now and just grab a shot of just those two trees and see how that looks as well. Um, I'll put both on now. So I've been in this wood for about two and a half, three hours now. And honestly, the place is dripping with trees like you see here, full of features, absolutely superb. And can you imagine what that would look like in a layer of thick mist with just a bit of light filtering through above? I can't imagine how good that shot would look. But honestly, the woodland is full of scenes like that. They are everywhere. And on the right day, you'd be running around wondering what to shoot for the best. The light right now isn't that good. Um, it's coming directly into the front of the camera, so I wouldn't be able to get the shot just to show you what, what, it, you know, what it could be like. It would just be very, very contrasty. So I'm going to leave it alone today. Um, I'm going to head down to the River Valley now and have a look what that's like. Um, hopefully there's some leaves on the rocks and some nice cascades. Um, still a bit of autumn colour about that's fallen and we can create some nice images down there. But I think as a two part day, um, maybe a morning up here while it's nice and foggy and then had, heading down um, to the river after lunch would make a fantastic day out. I'm so impressed with this place. So I hope you can hear me um, down in the river valley now and I've been walking along for a little while along the 
many, many footpaths that fringe the river itself. And I have to say, it's like this for about a mile. And there's so many cascades with mossy boulders. It's just an infinite amount of photographic potential if you're into photographing um, images of moving water, um, leaves fall and leaves stuck to the wet rocks. And you've also got in many places much of the character woodland um, to form the backdrop of the shot as well. I'm sort of losing light now in the river valley myself. Um, and I may just try one before it goes dark if I can find a good composition. But I've just spent quite a bit of time walking up and down, just, just checking it out. And this will keep you busy, as would the, the woodland. It will keep you busy um, for a long time. Everywhere you look, there's different cascades. You can, you can get individual cascades. You can get groups of cascades. Or you can photograph the whole scene. It's just loads and loads of potential. I'll try and find something now quickly, get something set up, and then I think I'm going to call it a day. So I've finally got into a good position. I've spent quite a bit of time looking for the bigger scene on this occasion for this water section. But as is often the case with photography, less is very often more. So because of the limited time that I've got, I've decided to focus on just one little point of the cascade. So essentially what I've framed up on is there's two cliffs of rock where the water's pouring through it. There's a nice bit of colour in the water. It's almost like a peaty colour to it. Now as the rock drops, as the water, sorry, as the water drops down, it hits another rock and then sort of flows round the rock, the other rock at the bottom of the cascade. I'll show you in a second um, through the live view. But as that comes round, it creates an S curve, and that S curve is what we're always looking for in our images: something to take your eye in and through the scene. Now I can't lie, there was a lot of leaves on these rocks when I arrived, and I have removed some of them. Now some will say that that's not natural and you should leave it alone, but I'm trying to create something that can be classed as art, that can go on somebody's wall. And yeah, it would look natural, um, but some would look at it and feel that it's very, very messy and disjointed. So what I've done is I've removed a lot of the leaves just to leave some key ones in place to help frame the composition. Um, I promise I haven't put any in. They're all exactly as they were when I found them. So I'm ready to take the shot. I'm on f18, no need for grads, um, the shutter speed is about one and a half seconds, so that's plenty um, to slow the water down. Um, mirror's locked up, we're on live view, and take the image. I've already pre-focused, so I know that it's going to be nice and sharp. I think that's a really lovely image and a great end to the day. This woodland has provided me with everything that I need going forward. And uh, if you fancy coming, spending a day with me here, then you'll get a lot out of it. It's a really great place. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to put this picture on now. I have just seen another little, little potential shot there where the water's flowing over and down and the, the, the warm light is starting to catch the top of the pool. I might have a go at that before I go home. Um, so, yeah, this shot might be the last shot, but it may be followed by another. So I'm going to leave it there. And, and say if you've enjoyed the film as always please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications leave some comments below and i'll see you all again next time bye for now